Hello everyone and peace of Christ all of you. I apologize we have some technical difficulty. This is what happened when you don't say Inshallah. A Muslim he decided to refute me or refute me. And uh, you know, as usual, you know, you talk about potato, they answer you about tomato. We say to them, Muhammad, he lie here, he lie there. They ignore it as we say nothing. Uh, the oneness of Allah they ignore the whole video whatever we show as reference uh, Muhammad he killed Muhammad he raped he talk, they talk right away it's about talking about something else so this is the nature of Islam it's like you know somebody he borrow money from you you see him you see uh, uh, are you making money now which mean you know like you are trying to, to say to him nicely isn't it time to pay me so what he say? Hey, by the way, how's your wife? <laughs> and this is what the Muslim they try to do for us. So let us see how this Muhammadan he is going to refute us. Uh, and by the way, the the video previous video, I took it down because I wanted to make it short, and I shorten it, and now I'm loading it. But it's going to come to you as what they call it, prime, premium, paramam something, you know, paramera. <laughs> so it's going to be show up for you. I, I'm loading it right now, but it's going to come later, scheduled for broadcast, so you can download it. So let us see what this Muhammadan, how he answer everything we have. I mean, in one shot, copy paste people, fact explained. And by the way, I offer him. To give me his Skype so we can have him live on air and he can tell us how truthful what he is posting for us. Restrain your anger. This is 100 commandment for a wonderful life. You see, I'm not going to examine them all, but I will go by the order you gave us. If if those if if the first a few of them is a lie, it's mean the rest is a lie. I mean, do I need really to go? Obviously, you are the one who put them in order, in certain order. You are the one who choose your cherries. This is the best of us. Now remember, this is not me who choose it. So I'm going to go with you. Restrain your anger. Mm. the Quran teach Muslim to restrain their anger okay oh you know what the website have a problem this website is not working so how we are going to show you now? <laughs> you know, the, the Mohammedan are the most funny people when they come to us to speak about good things in the Quran. You are telling me that Islam teach you to restrain your anger. So who is the one who just cut the head of a teacher? Who is the one who cut the head of a, of a woman in the church? Who is the one who stabbed people in the Christmas street? And what about your prophet? He split a woman to pieces when she's alive. Did he restrain his anger? What about calling the Christian zebra? We are zebra. Not only he called us donkeys, he gave us better rank. <laughs> we are zebra. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> So when a Muslim he speak about don't be rude let me try again maybe this website will come back to work oh it's working now wonderful did Muhammad restrain his order even with Muslims this is Sahih. 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 So don't play the game of weak and okay. 
how Muhammad he used to deal with his followers, not the Christian. Okay, he he killed the Christian, he raped the Christian, he raped the Jews, he take their kids. He you know he he. Uh, I mean, he's a good guy. How the good guy who the Quran said to him, "Don't be rude in this speech." Chapter three, verse one fifty nine. This is your order. This, you see, this is your choice. Huh? Don't be rude. Chapter 3, verse 159. Restrain your anger. We will go to the verses, by the way, because we will laugh there too, just to show you how stupid what you are posting. But just to show you the hypocrisy. Well, if this is what the Quran is teaching, shouldn't the Muslim question the ethic of the one who taught, you and who taught them this? Isn't it embarrassing? that I teach you not to be rude, and then I am rude? Is it embarrassing to teach you to restrain your anger, and then I beat the hell of you? And I say the F word to your mother? Or to your father? Isn't it embarrassing to say to me, be good to others, and then I beat you? Just because I am arrogant, all those will be in this hadith. Read carefully. People start complaining about the ethic of this man who he claimed to be the prophet of God. So Muhammad he seek an excuse. Let us read the excuse. The chapter name, who whomever, I think the chat is disabled, right? Actually, I think it's better. Just keep it disabled. There's many people they just come for fun. It's like a coffee shop, you know? Keep it disabled. Let the people focus with us. Don't forget to give it a like or dislike. Either way is good. And why we have only 500? Come on. If you don't bring more, I will beat you. Because the Quran told me don't be rude. The chapter of whomever is cursed, revealed, or prayed against by the prophet when he does not deserve that. What? The prophet is cursing people when they don't deserve that? And the Quran taught the prophet to restrain his anger and not to be rude and not to harm people? I mean, he is a perfect prophet who follow a perfect Quran. So look what you did. You just said to us that the first three, four commands in the Quran, Muhammad, he whipped the floor with them. And you see here, I mean, Muslim cannot play games, says, oh, those people, they deserve it. It says when he does not deserve it. He's cursing people. Not only cursing, you will see. I mean, just, just wait. You just condemned your prophet. Arrogant. Not good to others. He harmed people who don't deserve to be harmed. He is rude to people who don't deserve to be rude, too. And he is angry and harmed him physically. Read the story. Abu Huraira, the father of the cat, said, reported that Allah Apostle saying, O oh Allah, I make a covenant with thee against which thou would not uh, never go. What does never go? What does that mean? I am a human being, and thus for a Muslim one whom I gave him any harm. He gave him what? Any harm. What? Or whom I scold them. He did whip them. He did beat them. He put them in the floor and he started beating the hell of them. He bring a leather belt or tough stick. He put you in the floor. And you have to submit to the prophet. You can't say, stop me, man. The prophet is beating you. You deserve it. You deserve it. And he start beating the hell of you. 
and he start harming you and he start cursing you and he say the f word to your mother the f word to your father and all of this is what you don't deserve it i am a human so what is the excuse for a human who claimed to be a prophet of God? To beat someone, he do nothing. To harm someone, he did nothing. To whip the back and the skin of someone, he did nothing wrong. What kind of a prophet he invoked curse of God. And he beat when he is cursing. And now he claimed, I can fix it. Huh? I ask Allah to make this a source of a blessing. Uh -huh. Hey, fact explained. Do you like to be whipped by the prophet? Because if he whipped you and you don't deserve it, that will purify you. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. I mean, the Muslims are so cute. I mean, we have to admit. You like it, you don't like it, they are. And look, they work so hard to collect those ideas together. The Quran, brother, teach us good manner. Yes, brother. The Quran, all of it is about manner. But our prophet, he don't have the good manner. The Quran have it. Our prophet don't practice the, the Quran, but the Quran have it. <laughs> that is hilarious. Don't you agree with me? And look, You quote for me the Quran, right? This is what you quote for me. Chapter 3, 159, chapter 3, 134. I think I don't know why you are not coming in order. You should go first to 134, and then you go to 159 right away. But we will go here. Atiya Allah and obey the messenger. To do what? that you may obtain mercy. So how we can obtain mercy by obeying a man, he curse people, he beat people, he harm people who don't deserve it. What does that mean? That means he is arrogant, coward, unjust, taking advantage of poor people, releasing his anger on people who have nothing to do with his anger, using violence against those who believed him. Muhammad is not a good Muslim then. And you know, when you say, don't be rude in the speech, not only your prophet is rude, your prophet is really, very, really, really filthy. As an example, is it rude to say to a man, did you F her? Hmm? Did you F her? Is that rude? An Abbas, an 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 noon. He said, لعلك قبلت أو غمست أو نظرت قال لا يا رسول الله a prophet of Allah, he says such a word. I want you to go in the street and say it. Did you F her? There is a million way to say, did you sleep with her? And look, look, the Muslim in the translation, they 
cover everything. They said, did you have intercourse with her? We are in the Arabic, it says, did you have intercourse? Are you ashamed of the faith of your prophet? Not to forget your prophet, a man who is a proud. Oh, hold on. I saw you here saying that you have to be good to your parents. Mm -hmm. Chapter 17, verse number 23. But your prophet, he said, the one who is proud about his parents pre-Islam, tell him to go and bite the penis of his father. To bite what? The penis of your father. I thought the Quran teach us to be good to our parents. What's wrong with saying I am proud of my parents? Hmm? What is the problem of Muhammad? What is, uh, what is the issue? Oh, the issue is that those are not Muslims. Be proud of your parents. The guy, he is proud about his parents. Oh, tell him to go and bite his father's penis. Let me see if I can find the hadith in English. You know when the when the Muslims they come to us uh, with the stories, you wonder those Muslims are they coming from the same planet we live in? For sure, we will not find. In the English translation, anywhere it says, Go and bite your father penis in Islamic sunnah.com. They make it go and bite him. Bite him? You go and bite him? So, this is Islamic question and answer. I just searched it in Google. It come in my, you know, because I want to show you the reference. The Muslim, they will say, That's not true. Detailed discussion about the hadith. Tell him to bite his father penis. A refutation of those who say this is a bad speech, obscene speech. The Muslim are refuting you. Question. An atheist asked me how could the Messenger of Allah speak in such a way? You read the question. Go and bite his father penis. The answer, firstly, firstly, <laughs> firstly, the Muslim should not be at, pay attention to the slander against the Prophet Muhammad. Mm -hmm. This is firstly. And secondly, verily, you Muhammad, the blessing be upon you as our exalted standard of character. Mm -hmm. You see the answer? The Prophet is an exalted standard of, a, of character of a human being. I mean, who can be like the Prophet? Nobody. Can you come to such a manner? You know, the Muslim, they say Christian prince is rude. Why? Because I use donkey. The Quran calls us donkeys. Why I cannot call you donkey? <laughs> they can use it. We cannot use it. So if a Muslim call me and say, I say to him, go and bite the penis of your father, uh, the Muslim, they will say, uh, let us say I have I have people who uh, uh, I'm claiming to be a prophet like Muhammad. The followers of this guy will say, oh, he have a great character. 
It's okay if he say, go and buy the penis of your father. Allah in heaven, he said he is the best of the character. Al-Kalam, chapter Al-Kalam, 68, verse number four, brother. Allah himself, he praised him. Okay. Allah, he praised him for what? For saying, buy the penis of your father. Secondly, brother. Secondly, brother. Our prophet Muhammad was more shy than a virgin. Uh -huh. I mean, do you see how shy he is? Muhammad is so shy more than <laughs> Is that a comedy thing? I wonder what is that? Muhammad was more shy than a virgin. And what is the answer? The guy is asking you, Alton, now you are telling us Muhammad is shy. Muhammad is a good guy. Muhammad, he is, he is very restrained in his speeches. What is the answer? I'm just looking, I'm trying to find the answer. They are giving you a reference that the Prophet was polite. But why you say to him, go and bite the penis of your father? Any Mohammedan? Fourthly, firstly, secondly. It was narrated by Ubay, blah, 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 blah. He said, if someone boasting in ignorant manner on his tribal lineage, then tell him to bite his father penis. And I do not see that as a metaphor. Hmm. So, I thought we can be respectful for our parents. No, you cannot. The second you say, I'm proud of my parents, as long as they are Muslims, go and bite the penis of your father. What about Muhammad saying, my father and your father in hellfire? Let us find you the hadith. A man asked me, asked Muhammad, where is my father? The messenger of Allah he replied, your father in hell. When he turned his back, he said, my father and your father are in hell. <laughs> Where is the respect to your father? A prophet of God, being hypocrite to a man, saying to him, oh, you know what? Your father and my father both are in hell. Mm -hmm. And who is Muhammad who decide who go to hell, who don't? Maybe Allah forgive him. No, Allah will not forgive him. That's it, Muhammad is God. And how you can be Respected to your father. Did Abraham in the Quran insulted his father? I mean, so what the Muslim they say to us, they bring to us an argument which is false and proving that Muhammad again is a false prophet. 
if we go and see more of his what he posts for us uh, we cover we cover don't be rude Muhammad is rude restrain your anger Muhammad beat people unjustly he harmed them physically he cursed them he said dirty language for them don't be arrogant what arrogant mean if you are wrong agree you are wrong right okay <clears throat> Let us see if Muhammad was arrogant. And try not to laugh with me now. This is your prophet. And let me show it to you from a Sahih Hadith so you don't say, oh, this is, uh, this is Daif, brother. No, it's not Daif, it's Sahih. Anyway, let us see, let us see, look, all, all, all of those, uh, the same, anyway, we can show any of them anyway. Any of them make no different. Look at the arrogant, stupid man, his name is Muhammad. Narrated from Umm Salama, one of uh, the wives of Muhammad, he had many wives, he's a very decent man, you know, he's not after women. I mean, come on. Did you see the video of uh, Dr. Holes in the narrative? When he said when the wife of Muhammad, she went away, the prophet, he called Maria the maid, and he jumped on her in the bed. Very decent man. The wife, she is not there. We, we, we jump on the, in, in the maid. So narrated by Umm Salama, first-hand witness of Muhammad, that we were with the messenger of Allah. She said, so when we were with him, Ummu Ibn Maktoum, or Ibn Ummu Maktoum, this guy is a blind man. He is the, the same one who the chapter of Abasa speak about him. Muhammad, because he is a poor man, he kicked him away from his house. The guy is teaching us the Quran, teach good manner. There's a chapter about it. Abasa wa tawalla injahu al-ama. He turned, he gave him a face. When the blind man come and people they start talking about Muhammad what kind of a prophet he is so rude to a blind man you know I don't want to mention it without showing it to you read it I mean do you see the manner and then the Muslim they say to you well uh, the prophet is a human being he make mistakes you make mistakes so he was not guided Was he guided or unguided? If you read the interpretation, Muhammad was sitting with rich men of Quraysh, explaining to them about Islam. A poor man, he's a blind man, poor, you know, poor. I mean, who is going to care for a poor? He's sitting with the leaders of Quraysh, trying to convince them to join Islam. Actually, this would be a great opportunity for Muhammad to show them how Islam is wonderful. And instead of being rude to the poor blind man, you should be very merciful. And then they will say, wow, look at this guy. He take care of the poor. And instead, Muhammad, he kicked him out from his place, claiming that the reason is he is speaking to the rich. Look, see the Muslim here, he says, interrupting, interrupting. Nowhere in the Quran says that. And if you go into interpretation, you will see clearly they say because he was speaking to the rich people of Quraysh. Rich come first. Are you rich? Special customer service. And when the, the people, they start making fun of him, he make a chapter saying, Allah, he told me, don't do that again. Oh, how nice. <laughs> Where was Allah before he do it? Muhammad was guided. Where is the Quran who praised Muhammad for the best manner? Imagine you are crossing the street and there's a blind man trying to cross the street and there's a rich man trying to cross the street. You take the hand of the rich man to be sure he is going to reach the other side of the road. 
and you push down the blind man, say to him who care for you. But the rich man, he's a rich man. He can see he have eyes. Why Muhammad is so interested of the rich man to reach to heaven, but not the blind man? Or the blind man, he don't have donation. He need money. So when you speak about manner in the Quran, we laugh. Then we go back to the hadith. Just to show you the arrogant Muhammad. He don't want to admit that he is a fool. You know what the word fool mean? Maybe you don't know. So when the blind man, he come to the house, so we were with him, Ibn Umm Maktoum, came, and he entered upon him. And that was after veiling had been ordered for us. So the messenger of Allah said, veil yourself, veil yourself from him. What? What, what? Veil yourself from him, him who? The blind man. The wives of Muhammad, they are smarter than him. And this is a proof that Muhammad is a liar when they say women are stupid. Listen carefully, read carefully, think carefully. Veil yourself from who? From him. Him who? This man, Ibn Umm Maktoum. Ibn mean son, Umm mean father. Maktoum is the name. So veil yourself from him. Wonderful. So I said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, isn't he is, is, is he not blind? <laughs> such, such that he cannot see us or recognize us. The Messenger of Allah said, <laughs> Oh my I love it, I love it, I love it. I mean, he is not arrogant, he is not a stupid. He didn't want to admit that they got him busted. He didn't want to admit that he's a fool. Look what he said. So the messenger of Allah said, Are you too blind too? You cannot see him. But what the veil have to do with seeing somebody? Muslim women, when they veil themselves, they are allowed to see a man. Do, do your mother go in the street and see men in the street she's allowed? Is it haram? Do your sister, do your wife, do your... You see the stupidity? He don't want to admit that he's a fool. He said something stupid. Can any Muslim show me where is in Islam, it says, a woman she cannot see a man? Because if this is true, all Muslim women, they should be jailed inside their houses. And if they go out to the street, they have to fold their eyes. So either you have to admit that your prophet is a fool, liar, arrogant, or he's saying the truth, and women, they should fold their eyes, see no one. What is the purpose of the veil? Where in the Quran it says that women, they should close their eyes. See no one except their husband or their sons. When I say stupidity is amazing, I mean it. I will just, uh, I don't want to make the video so long. Don't enter your private, the, your, uh, 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 don't enter parent private room without asking permission. That's a good one. That's a very good one. What about your prophet entering the house of his own son by adoption when the husband was not there and flirting with the women? Was that a good manner? 
And he said to her, Praise be to Allah, the one who made my heart flip for you. Subhana wa'alif al qulub. Is that a good manner? So you cannot enter the bedroom of your parents in their private room without knocking at the door. And by the way, that verse you are quoting for us, speaking about the slaves too. Slave owner Muhammad, slave owners Muslims. But yet Umar al-Khattab, he used to beat a woman if she cover herself, if she is a slave. And he said to her, are you trying to make yourself equal to the free women? which means the white women. He did beat her for covering her hair. We can go all over all of these and we will find that none of them is a truthful. And if they are there, that means Muhammad is a false prophet because he never practiced what he said. A man of God, he do as he say, he say as he do. If you go right now to chapter 33, verse number 37, are we going to find a decent man? Or we will find a filthy man going after married women? What we will find and remember the find we talk about is in muslim books not in our books the disaster we will find in their books if i go right now just to show reference as long we mention something about it <clears throat> Zainab, the wife of his own son by adoption. And let me show you. How I see your prophet at that moment. Go into the house of his own son. When the husband is not there. What a good man should do when he adopt a man. Say, and he was loud, keep screaming. Zayd is my son and be my witness. He is my son and I am his father. He is from me and I am from him. How many times he said that? Go and see the, see the reference. And then when the husband is not home, he go to the wife and he tell her, I want you. That is your father. The one you are proud about him. This is Al-Qurtubi. And we are going to use a simple method we use always because this is in Arabic. This is the official government website of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. This is not my website. I have nothing to do with it. Al Qurtubi, Tafsir Al Qurtubi. Very Islamic website. Here it says. That after Muhammad, he wanted to, he wanted uh, Zainab, the wife of his son, each time the husband, he tried to sleep with her, Allah, he make his penis swell. If you are a listener to me and you are suffering from a swelling penis, obviously the Prophet, he like your wife. It's a miracle of Allah. وروي في الخبر أنه أمسى زيد فأوى إلى فراشه قالت زينب لم يستطعني زيد زيد he came to the bed to do boom boom زيد زينب she said he could not do it 
And she continues saying, وَمَمْ تَنَعَ مِنْهُ غَيْرُ مَا مَنَعَهُ اللَّهُ مِنِّي Nothing did not allow him to do it except Allah. He did not allow him. And he cannot do it. And then later she say that each time he try, he make Allah, he make his penis swell. Let us show you the, where it says, because the Muslim, they will say, oh, where? 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 Here we go. And in the hadith is mentioned from Zainab, she said that in Zaydan tawarrama dharika minhu hina arada an yaqrubaha. That Zayd, his penis is swell when he tried to get it close to her. Here they go down, you will see more scandals. Muqatar he report that the Prophet he married Zainab bin to Jahsh, the daughter of the donkey, to Zayd. And she left with him for some time. And then the Prophet he went to, to visit Zayd to see Zayd. And he saw Zainab standing she was white big and white you know the arab at that time i want to use a word people don't like it but it's this is what it is jamila jasima she was fat huge big and white and for the arab that is the perfect beauty that mean a, a healthy female she will give them healthy babies a skinny woman at that time nobody will marry her so she is white perfect the arab are obsessed with white women she is big she is fat and here it says min atam min nisa'i quraish after he described how fat she is he said she is the most perfect beautiful woman of the tribe of quraish fahawiha he fell in love with her in a lost way, you know, not love. Fahawiya has like a, he wanted her, not love really. Hawa, you know, like air. The word Hawa is air. Something come with the air. So he got horny. وقال, Subhanallah, Praise be to Allah, the one who flipped my heart for you. And Zainab, she heard the Prophet. She told her husband. Suddenly her husband, he went, oh, he said, and here it says, Fafatina Zaid. So Zaid, he noticed now. He noticed. He noticed what? That his wife and his father, they are sleeping together. I mean, imagine a wife, she is telling her husband, your father was here, and he said to me, he liked me in a sexual way. What the son will do? What he would do. Shame on my father. What a sick man. Whatever. Instead, the son, he don't dare because Muhammad will kill him, will slaughter him in a second. He went to his father by adoption and said to him, you know, I don't like this woman. She have a bad mouth. Mm -hmm. فَإِنَّ فِيهَا كِبَرُ She's so proud, arrogant, and she hurt me with her tongue. And remember, we saw Yasser Qadi speaking about uh, Dr. I mean, whole in the narrative, that bad women for bad men. Allah, he sent bad women for bad, women, bad, bad men. So Zainab is a bad woman. So how Allah, he sent her to Muhammad. <laughs> <laughs> the 
this is the website, the same website in English. Brother and sister. After the prophet, he flirted with me. He wanted me. Zaid, he could not do me. Ooh. And nothing prevent him from doing me except Allah. Mm -hmm. And then she told her husband that what the prophet he said, and then Zaid, right away he went to the prophet, he said, Zainab, she hurt me with her tongue. She's like a lizard, filthy, disgusting women. She does this and that. He was lying. Or he was telling the truth. Zaid, he went to Muhammad and he said to him, I want to leave her and complain about her rudeness, disobedience to orders. She hurt me with her tongue and glorified and honor like she's proud. And then Muhammad, he said to him, Fear God, man. Why do you want to divorce her? Look at the coward. A second ago was flirting with the wife. A second after saying to him, no, 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 keep your wife, man, keep your wife. Don't do that. <laughs> so when the Muslim, they speak about the Quran teaching good manner. What manner you are talking about? The Quran teaching rape. The Quran praising a rapist. The Quran praising a man who is cheating. A man who is going after or even married women in his own people and actually if you read the privilege in the same interpretation you will see it says that Allah he gave Muhammad 16 privilege one of them if the pri the prophet his eyes fall into a woman her husband must divorce her must what must divorce her I mean do you see the decency But remember, Allah is powerful. Here we have a story we cannot forget. It's a miracle. He made his penis swell. I mean, that is a miracle. And the, the Christian, the, they lie and they say the prophet. He don't have miracles. If the prophet don't have miracles so what about the penis how the penis of Zaid swell can you explain that to me you cannot no Christian can explain such a miracle you have to admit Let me see where we can find this, his penis as well in English. We found it in Arabic. We want to find it in English in the page there. Let us see. Perfect, Prophet, perfect. Islam is all about man or man. What are you talking about? You are a liar. Uh, maybe in the English translation here it's not showing swell I think swell have to be uh, it's not coming in the translation here Well, you know what, I'm going to pause the link underneath of this uh, thing here. And uh, uh, you guys look for the word in English here, the translation where it says swell. 
All right, but here it is in Arabic. Tawarrama. We can take it actually to Google Translation right now as we speak. Give me a second. We copy it. We open Google Translation. <clears throat> Here we go. As it is in the interpretation. Zaid swelled, swelled it from him when he wanted to bring her near. <laughs> Translation is funny. <laughs> What a lovely translation. It's like Christian Prince reading in English, man. Unbelievable. <laughs> so, my friend, if the idea is to prove to us that you, Islam teaching you good, so how come you don't do good? The worst place to live is Islamic countries. Prostitution, adultery, kidnapping, raping. Women, she cannot walk in the street alone without a guardian. She cannot. Why? Because she is in danger. You see a video of Zach and Nike saying, do you know how many rape in America? Every whatever second there is a rape. Her friend in America, if a woman, she is married, and her husband, he sleep with her against her will, she called the police for him. In, in, in Islam, if a woman, her husband rape her, she cannot even report that. Actually, the word rape never mentioned in the Quran. Actually, there's a story when a man, he did rape a woman in the desert because she was hungry. He told her, this is how the story happened. She's dying. She needs food. He said to her, take off your panty. I will give you some food. The woman, she is dying. She have no choice. He gave her food and water after she allowed him to sleep with her. The Muslim said, you see? He said, allow her. The woman, she went to the caliphate Omar and she said to him this is what this man did to him he forced me to sleep with him in order to survive the caliphate he says mahar 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 he paid you your dowry that is the good manner of Islam your sister she is in the desert you as a good Muslim you will not let her live for free you have to sleep with her exchange of some water is mahar And the Muslim is coming on coming to us to teach us good manner. Be my witness, whoever is listening. Do you see any good manner in this? Kidnapping, stealing, killing husband, taking his wife, raping the woman even before she passed the street of her home. Torturing a man because he want to know where he hide his money. This is his money. What's your problem? No, he's a Jew. We need to take his money. Sending assassination to kill a man. He is over the age of 100. Splitting a woman to pieces. When she is alive. Protect the orphans. How Muhammad he protect the orphans? I see here one of them. It says protect the orphans. I like that. Do you really say protect the orphans? Don't engage in bribery? Didn't your prophet used to receive a bribe, bri bribery every day? <laughs> Isn't it a jizya is a bribery? Isn't it Aisha she receiving gift and the Muslims are the, the wives are fighting over those gifts? Why he's receiving gifts? Why a prophet of Allah who have a lot of income need gifts? It's a bribery. People don't give you something and you are in a charge unless you need something from them or you want something from you. Be nice to orphan. This is what he said. Do you know how to be nice to orphans? Sleep with them. Have you ever heard of such a religion? If you are nice to the orphan, you sleep with them. Chapter 4, verse number 3. If you fear you shall not be able to deal justly with the orphan, then go and F women of your choice. 
what this have to do with this? Sleeping with the children is a charity. And that will take us, I'm trying to finish the video. What was I say? I'm going to make it short. I hate myself. Do you remember Muhammad? When a man, he got married from a widow? He got married from a widow. This is Sahih. He asked the man, did you get married? He said, yeah. He said, uh, a virgin or previously married? He said, previously married. Then the prophet, he said, why? Why? Why you don't marry a young girl so you can sport with her? Huh? The good manner of the good prophet train a man who is already married to a widow. What's wrong with you, man? Are you stupid or what? Why you don't marry a child? And what is the purpose? To play with her. Do you know how fun it is? You have no idea what you are missing. Ask me about Aisha, how fun she is. How sick, disgusting you are. This is the devil himself is speaking. The man is not complaining. He's happily married. What's your business? And now the man, he will start thinking, oh man, what I did to myself. Why I marry a widow? The man, he got Muhammad busted. He said to him, shame on you, Muhammad. I have my brother. He was fighting for you. And he died. And he left me many girls, little daughters. So I cannot marry someone in their age. <laughs> Look, Muhammad, what he said. Why you don't marry a young girl? so that you could sport with her and she could sport with you or you could amuse with her. Ha ha ha, they are cute, funny, I like puppies. She could amuse with you. I said to him, Abdullah died, fell as a murder fighting for you. And he left nine or seven daughters behind him. Therefore, I did not approve the idea of bringing a girl like them, which means in their age. The guy, he have seven or nine orphans. The, the one who reported the story, he don't remember if it was seven or nine. They are little girls. He said, I cannot bring little girl like them. I need, I need a woman to take care of them. I mean, how disgusting the manner of Islam. And how in the world you can trust a Muslim visiting you in your house. And you have a little girl in the room if they are believing in Muhammad. This hadith actually proven that Muhammad not only a child molester, he is sick. He is encouraging people to go after little children. And the purpose, nothing good. She can do nothing of her own. I mean, she is a child. It's just to sport with her. She will amuse you and you will amuse her. And you know, little girls, yeah, they are little children, you know. You give them a candy, they are happy. Candy, you want candy? Yeah, hey, happy. Not like a woman, she is smart. Growing women, little children, we can control them. And this is what Muhammad is doing, encouraging his men to be pedophiles. Ask yourself, if you are a person who have a daughter and she is widow and she married this man and then a strange man he come to him and he say why you marry the daughter of this man she is widow why you don't go after little child so you can play with her and what kind of play we will play so my friend your name is fact explained well we gave you all the facts your prophet 
is a scam. Can you refute our facts? I will be waiting for you. And by the way, I have a special invitation for you to give me your Skype and I will call you. I did not call for a while because I'm bored of it actually. But maybe you are better. Look, you have a pay a copy paste to skills. Can you prove me wrong? So it's a challenge for you to give me your Skype and I will call you. And let us see how good your fact is. We will check your fact one by one live on air. Either people laugh at you or people laugh at me. However, before you call me, I want you to be sure that you are not married to a widow because she don't amuse you. She got to play sport with you. If you are a bit of file, don't call me. However, I challenge you all to show me the good manner of your prophet. This is your books. This is your translation. This is your hadith. Printed, published, preserved, agreed upon by you. This is not our translation. Those are not our numbers. We did not call it Sahih, which means authentic. It's you who call it authentic. It's you who give it a number. It's you who carry it through generations. And it's you today who will spit on it or deny it because it's very embarrassing. The chapter, it is recommended to marry virgins who they are young little girls, who they are in the age of little daughter. This is the name of the chapter. Thank you very much for being here. May the Lord bless you. And again, the previous video which we took down, I cut it short, is going to be, you know, uh, uh, broadcast, schedule broadcast, they call it premiere, whatever they call it, is going to be tomorrow lunch for you you can watch it live and you can download it we just made it short anyway so thank you very much for being here may the lord bless you all and enter we'll see you soon again this is your brother christian prince wishing you a great sunday we pray to the lord to keep us in good health and wealth to provide us to protect the christians the jews the hindus the atheists the muslims all the world from the from the deception and stupidity number one enemy to mankind is their ignorance they follow a man blindly when the man, the dead man, Muhammad, is a fraud. Those stories are proven to us who is he. The Bible says, the Lord said, from their fruits you shall know them. What do you think of a, of a fruit of a man? He encouraged you to divorce your wife and get a little girl, child, just for fun. What do you think of a man? He go to the sun house and he go after the wife who is already married. And he is the one who married her to this man. And he is adopted this man. And later he forbid adoption so he can have this woman. He practiced adoption himself. And I believe strongly he practiced the adoption so he can go inside the house of this man. He can sleep with the wife. And now it is time for her to go to my bed. From the first day he married her, he is sleeping with her. That is Muhammad. That is your Muhammad and that is my Christ. The one who never commits sin. The one the Quran says about him in chapter 19 verse 19, a holy son. The one who is right now in heaven. The one who no man can rebuke him for sin for he is good and God is good and your God is not and your prophet is not thank you God bless you and see you soon again